OpenAI have just released ChatGPT Atlas, and it might completely change the way that you use the internet forever. It's a brand new browser that's been released from OpenAI that embeds ChatGPT into the experience. In today's video, we're going to walk through how to download it and get it set up, and some of the core capabilities it's able to do. And all of the links from the video today will be linked down below. So what is ChatGPT Atlas? Well, imagine your web browser like Chrome or Safari could actually talk to you, help you understand things, and even take actions for you. That's where ChatGPT Atlas comes into play. Imagine you're reading a long article. Well, if you're using Atlas, it will summarize the key points for you nice and easily. If you're writing something, maybe you used to copy and paste it into ChatGPT, now you can do it all in one place straight through Atlas. It also integrates ChatGPT's agent to take over the screen and be able to complete specific tasks for you. They're definitely not the first to do this, but OpenAI has a huge market share, which could completely change the way that the majority of people use the internet. So let's download it and show how it works. Currently, it's only available for Mac OS on your desktop. So we're gonna click download for Mac. And once you've added it to applications, it should look like this. We're gonna do log in with chat GPT. Once you've logged in, your screen should look something like this. You're able to import all of your different passwords, activities, bookmarks, everything like that from a different browser if you want to. We're gonna skip that for today. You're able to turn on browser memories if you want to. So this is gonna be able to keep track of what you do and be able to suggest some actions in the future. We're gonna turn that on for now. And we're able to use Ask ChatGPT on any website, which is one of the new features. We're also gonna get a pop-up for where we can use ChatGPT to help draft emails, reviews, or fill out forms instead of you having to do it manually. We're going to do continue and if we want to, we can set it as our default browser. So now we're all set up and ready to go. We're able to do join and that's it. We're all ready to go. So now as you can see here, it looks exactly the same as a normal browser. So for example, we can come into here and it works exactly the same as ChatGPT. So we can say, please tell me the latest release from OpenAI. We can send this off and now what it's going to be doing is searching across the internet to find the information that we're looking for. So this part is exactly the same as what you've probably used to date. What you'll see up the top here as well is we've got a couple of different options for that information being returned back. We've got the home, which is like that chat GPT interface. We've got the actual search that is done so we can find all of the different links. We can see any images that is going to actually be able to generate for us as well, as you can see here, loading in the background. We can come across to the videos as well. So any of the videos that have been put out regarding this topic. And we've got the news too. So it gives us lots and lots of different options to come through and find the different parts and citations that it's used. If we come down the bottom, what we're also going to be able to see is that we've got the standard part, but the key new one is AI agent mode. Now, this is something that's going to be limited access at the start for pro and plus plans. So this is where we're going to, similar to Claude or Perplexity, enable ChatGPT to be able to take over our screen and complete certain actions. Now, OpenAI did say that it's going to be limited to not do certain actions, such as run code on your desktop. So they are putting some limitations in place in case you run into any issues. You're going to have a certain amount of credits for the, how often you can use this as well. So definitely keep an eye on that. If we come down to more, you're also going to see the browser memory, which is going to be keeping that context of anything that we search in the future in case we want to use it. So now to start a new conversation, exactly the same as using a normal browser. We just come up and press plus. As you can see here, it's going to have a few suggestions for you straight away. What we're also going to see is if we come up to this button here, is all of our conversation on the left-hand side and the different chats 
we would have in ChatGPT for us to use nice and easily. So say you want to get some information from a specific web page. We can do that nice and easily. We can do Google and as you can see here, it's going to auto populate at the bottom and take us across just like we would for a normal browser. So as you can see here, I can then do open AI and it works exactly the same way. But say we've already got a URL ready to go. Well, I can come down here, paste, and it's going to take us straight there. But that's just the start. The web page we're currently looking at is all around the brand new AI agent skills that have just been released by Claude that have lots and lots of different activities and customizable skills that you can give to Claude for it to complete specific tasks. And this is fantastic for many, many different use cases out there. But as you can see, it's a long document with lots and lots of information. So maybe we just want to get a summary of this web page. We can come up to ask ChatGPT. We can see that it's already pulled in that specific website on the left hand side. And now we've got a few different options to actually get some insights out. We can say that we actually want to start off by summarizing some of the key points from this web page here. So it's now going to start pulling them back for us to be able to see nice and easily. So now as you can see, we've got all of the information that's come back for us to be able to use. So we've got Anthropic introduces AI agent skills, a modular system that enables developers to extend Claude's capability, packaging domain specific expertise into structured composable folders. So what this enables us to do with Claude is give it specific tasks that it can complete, for example. So I'm sure we can go through and customize exactly how that wording will come back. And over time, it will learn what you like, dislike to provide a better output. Now, there's lots of information here, but I've got a specific question. We're going to say, are we able to do custom skills? Now, what it should do is go off and analyze all of this information and bring it back to us nice and easily, as we can see here. And I think this is going to be fantastic for lots of use cases out there, especially maybe learning or trying to analyze lots of research papers, especially if you're busy to pull out those key insights straight away. As you can see here, it's now walking us through how to be able to set it up and be able to install it into Claude. And it's got that security reminder. So that's how we're able to use ChatGPT directly with a web page nice and easily. But what if we want to give ChatGPT full control over our browser? Now, say we've got a task that actually we just want AI to complete. That's where we've got agent mode that's able to go through and complete that task for you. So as I could say, please find me a flight from LHR to JFK within the next 48 hours. We can do logged in or logged out. The difference between the two is if you're logged in and specify logged in, it's going to use any of your saved accounts, maybe for British Airways, Qatar Airways, anything like this to complete the task. If not, we use logged out and it's just going to go through as a normal sort of user, not logged in to find that information. We're also going to say, please use booking dot com to find the best flight and hotel for a seven day stay we're going to send that off and now it's going to be able to start completing that task for us what it's going to start off with is really thinking about the task we want it to complete again this is nothing brand new there's been lots of other tools out there that have been able to do this but what you can see in the background now is it going onto the website and starting to navigate around to find that information? At the bottom, we can also take control and stop the agent at any point in time to make sure that it's not doing anything we don't want it to. It's now going to start clicking around on the screen, as we can see here, to find the specific flight detail that we were looking for. So it's just clicked on the flight, as we can see in the background. It looks like it should come down to where you've got leaving from and going to. It's now going to come through and set London Heathrow or LHR. What you'll also see on the right hand side is the text explaining what the agent's doing throughout the process. Now, 
what it should specify is where we're going to, which should be the next one across. So we'll see if it's able to do that. There we go. Now what we're going to see is, is it going to be able to do JFK? Yep, is the destination there. Now, is this faster than someone doing it manually? Probably not at the moment, but there's lots of other use cases out there where actually getting AI to do it would be faster. It's now going to go through and choose the travel dates. It should find tomorrow and then a seven day period after that. So we're just going to wait to see what it comes back with. Now, the great thing about what you just saw as well is it looked like it initially got stuck and then it was able to figure out that you had to specify the flying out date first and then we were able to set the date we were returning so it was able to solve its own problems as it went through now it looks like it's waiting for the flights to load so as you can see here we've got a couple of different options they look around 800 pounds to be able to fly there and back within this time period it should be finding a couple of different suggestions for us as we can see here it's now saying reviewing flight search results i have to say i do quite like the way that they've done the integration for having digital background whilst the or digital overlay whilst the agent's actually going through and completing a task now it looks like it's searching for hotels within that specific time period as well so it was doing the second part of the task exactly as we mentioned. It's closed that sign in banner as we didn't want it to be there. And now it should start scrolling through it and trying to find some recommendations for hotel. I'd be interested to see which one it chooses, maybe based on some ratings or, you know, lowest cost. Be interesting to see what it comes back with. So it looks like it's going to be finishing up shortly. It's just saying that it's preparing a final response back to us which hopefully should be the recommendations for the flight as well as the hotel. It's definitely not been the quickest process so far, but maybe you set this before you go to make a coffee or something like that. It'd be a really great option. So there we go. It looks like it's fully completed the task. As we can see on the right hand side here, it's got some recommended flight details. So we've got a seven o'clock flight. So what we're going to do is come across to flights. We're going to do LHR. London Heathrow. We're going to get rid of the other one. We're going to do JFK. We're going to add this in here. We're going to come back to where we've got 22nd to the 29th. Just check that these flights actually exist. So if we scroll down, we're looking for a departure of five o'clock, which is this one down here. So it's not hallucinated. It has actually found the correct flight. We've got the returning as well. So it's done the 11:45. And coming back at 10 past 10 as well. It's going to be by British Airways as we can see here. So British Airways operated American Airlines. So it's picked that out correctly. It's going to be non-stop. Yep. So correct on all of that. We've got the price as well. So 829 for the price. Yep. That looks all correct. We've got the rationale. So it's explaining why it made that decision. So flight results from the 22nd to the 29th. Lots and lots of different options. We're going to arrive late. We've got the recommended hotel. So we'll come across to stay. So we're going to type in here that we've got new and then York. We're going to do New York, United States. We're going to do the same date times to adults and send the request off. So it recommended the Kipton Theatre. So we're going to copy this. Command F and paste. And there we go. We can see here is the second one. So it should be £2,253. So what we should see on the right hand side here is the price. Yeah, exactly the same, which is good to see. We've then got some of the reviews. So it's 8.2. And what we should see in here is we've got 8.2, comfort 8.8. So it all matches up. Great to go. And we've got the explanation in there in the background. And if we were logged in, it would actually be able to go through and make the booking for us if we wanted to. There's loads and loads of use cases of getting AI to take over the browser, so definitely make sure to check them out in other videos. So that's the AI agent integrated into your browser. Then what we can also do is use ChatGPT within different applications on our browser. So if we click new link, what we're going to do is say that we want a JSON online editor just to prove that it's not specific to Google Docs or anything like this. 
We can paste an example in there that says big news from OpenAI, the launch of ChatGPT Atlas is here. So maybe we want to improve this. We can highlight it and then you see a small green dot that's now going to say ChatGPT. So we can click on that and now we can explain the change that we want to happen. We can say please improve it so that we can post on LinkedIn. Now it's going to go off and start improving all of that text for us. So we can then directly put it onto LinkedIn. We can use it on different ones. And as you can see here, we can do update and it will just replace the text we already have in there. So it now enables you to bring ChatGPT into different applications to update text, anything like that. And it's going to make it incredibly easy and seamless to use ChatGPT in many different applications. Let me know your thoughts below on the ChatGPT Atlas. I'm excited to see what people think.